Ta, and I work for Repro Products in Smyrna, Georgia. I'm an Autodesk certified instructor and hold many certifications in multiple Autodesk products for the AEC industry. I hope you enjoy my screencast. If you'd like to see more of my screencasts, please search for VAR 2015, that's V-A-R 2015, or my name. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up after you watch it. In today's screencast, we'll be taking a look at the column grid command from the perspective of a structural engineer. Here I am in a standard uh, architectural Revit project. Uh, it, this will work both in the structural template file and architectural. I just started this up quickly. Here in the structure tab, you have the datum panel, you have the grid command. You also have it under the architecture panel as well. So they both function the same way. We start the grid command by selecting the command. And it goes very uh, into sketch mode. Everything is very light and gray. And they want you to draw your grid lines. Now in the type selector, you have quarter inch bubble, quarter inch bubble custom gap, and bubble gap. I'll show you all three. There are several ways to draw it. And the first one is just two picks. So if I pick and I drag and I pick, it places the first column grid in there. If I want to do the next one, I could just move my mouse and click and drag. And you'll notice that it also aligns if you click in the correct location, similar to levels. I can also use the pick method with an offset. And just watch where your green line goes, because if you aren't careful, it'll be on top of the grid lines. See that? So just keep going across and build the column grid line if you want. If you need to do the next one um, <clears throat> horizontally, just go ahead and place one. And you notice it's sequentially going up. You can select that text and change it. And once you've changed it, the next one sequence should come up. Now it's B. Once you've created your grid lines, you're finished. You can also use the arc method here to draw an arc. You can use this method here to pick the center point and an arc this way. You can use the pick method. And then lastly, there's the multi-segment, where it goes into sketch mode. And they're asking you to draw the magenta lines that represent the length of the um, column grid. Hit the green check mark and it builds it for you as a single unit. Back here in the column grid line command, if I select the column grid, I can switch it to the next one, say bubble custom gap. And what you see is that uh, the, the line work changes to a solid line, very light dashed, and then back to solid line. If you select it, you have these very, very tiny little dots that you can click and drag to change the location and length of the solid and then the beginning of the dash. You can also select um, and choose the bubble custom, just the bubble gap, and you don't see the line work at all, the dash line work at all. When you've finished creating your column grids, you can go ahead and start putting in columns. And let's look at structural columns for this one. Start the command in the type selector, pick what you want, and you can place it wherever you want. Okay. You can make sure that you specify height or depth. You can use the space bar to rotate as you're putting them in. If you're putting it at the intersection, you're lucky if you can hit it and it hits exactly. Sometimes, if you're working so fast, you might miss. So it makes more sense to use the at grid command and drag across and let it hit the intersections that you want. You can hit the space bar to rotate all of them, hit the finish tag, and those columns will be placed. Uh, you also have the ability, if you have an architectural column, say like that, you can put a structural column in the co architectural column like so. And then lastly, you can do slanted columns. And typically, uh, the easiest way that I like to do slanted columns is go to the 3D view. Start the column command, pick slanted, make sure 3D snapping is turned on, and pick the snap points that you want, and it will build you a 3D slanted column. And there you go. That's the uh, screencast today on structural column grids and a little bit on structural columns. Thanks for watching my screencast, and please don't forget to give me a thumbs up.